So on this episode of Just Miss Garage, let's talk about uh, changing valve springs. Um, if the heads are off the engine, changing valve springs really isn't all that difficult. But with the engine in the car, heads on the engine, and you've, you've broken a valve spring, which happens occasionally, or you just want to improve the, the, the pressure of the springs or just change them for whatever reason, it can be easily done. The key is really is tools. If you've got the right tools, it's a really simple process. Without the right tools, it's really a struggle. Um, we're not going to go into all the, you know, swinging rope into the combustion chamber to try and hold the valve up. We're not going to go through any of that stuff. You're going to do this professionally, do it correctly, but we'll show you how to do it. It's really simple. So before we show you the actual process, the, the tools are the key. So let's start with, um, you got the valve cover off, you've taken the rockers off, so now all the valves are closed, spring pressure is holding the valves closed. But when you go to re take the spring off, the valve is gonna drop. So the best deal is a little tool like this. This actually is part of our uh, compression testing tool from like Matco, there's a bunch of companies that make them. You can buy these separately. This screws into the, the intake, uh, or into the spark plug hole. And there's a little rubber seal on here, so it seals it up. And you just put compressed air in there. Compressed air will hold the valves in place. You'll see some leakage go by, but that's not a, an issue. So start with something like this. The, the most simplest tool uh, doesn't really work very well anymore. Um, in a situation like this, you just drop this over the rocker stud, put a knot on here with a washer, and then use leverage to compress the spring. The problem with this tool it works if you made the lever maybe about this long, but with spring pressures now being what they are, this is a really difficult tool to work with. I wouldn't suggest using it unless you're on a desert island somewhere and you've got nothing else to do. The next step up from that tool is something that's a little bit simpler. It uses some basically thread leverage to compress it. These slip into the spring itself. These little arms in here contact the retainer, pull the spring up by tightening this, this adjuster and that will compress the spring. The problem is this gets really difficult with, with relative, even with mild spring pressures. It's kind of a pain. The nice part about this tool is it will fit in tight places. If this is the back of the engine, for example, and we have a power brake booster right here, this might be the only tool that can actually get in there and do it. So it's an option. So obviously we've swapped to an LS head. This happens to be an LS3 L99 head, um, but I wanted to show you this tool from uh, LSM. This one only takes one spring at a time. It bolts to the uh, where the rockers would normally be. You would take the rockers off, but you would leave the, uh, the guide on the bottom. Bolt this thing in, and then it just spin it down on the, onto the spring, and then just, and that'll re that will compress the spring. You can then get the keepers out, pull the spring off, and swap it back again. Okay, for LS cylinder heads again, uh, this is a little bit different spring compressor. There's uh, several companies that make a, a kit like this. This is TFS, Lyle, uh, um, Comp, and Crane all make uh, tools similar to this. Uh, there are different tools depending upon whether it's a rec port or a, a cathedral port head because the spacing on these bolt holes is different. So you might wanna check into that before you buy the tool. But in this case, you bolt the tool down to the cylinder head with these two Allen bolts, and then this piece straddles both springs, and we just take a socket and tighten this rat, this nut down, and that'll compress both springs at the same time. Um, the tool that we're actually gonna show you we're gonna use is uh, this tool from Oroso. This thing is probably 30, 40, or 50 years old. It's slick. <clears throat> the way it works is you you can see there's a shaft right here. There's actually two ends on it. This is the 3 8 time. This is actually a 3 8 stud. We would turn this over if we were going to use it on this head. 3 8 stud on one end, 7 16 stud on the other. You slip this over the stud and then adjust it down. And then you would pull this, actually goes this way, and then compress this down with this handle. And that compresses the spring, allows you to pull it apart. We'll show you exactly how that works. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is slip the tool over the stud, run it down about six or eight turns, then configure this, put our handle on it, and then 
pop this in. Take our locks out. Tool just comes up out of the way. Pull the spring off. And then if you were breaking in an engine, for example, just remove the inner spring. Let's say you're breaking in a camshaft or whatever, flat top of camshaft. Just remove this, put it back on. We're just gonna put this right back on again. Show you how simple it is. Bring this back over. And then put the locks in. It's a little tight. So obviously we showed you how to change one spring. You've only got 15 more to go. We're not going to go through all 15 of them. That's kind of boring. So um, pretty simple process. The big thing is to just make sure you've got compressed air in the cylinder and uh, to hold it in place. And uh, the rest of it will follow, follow suit. So it's a nice, easy project. Not, not difficult at all once you have the right tools.